Welcome back to another Teacher Profile. We're here with Connie Parsons from the Natomas Unified School District. She is their Teacher of the Year for 2008. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, first tell me what you teach, where you teach, at what level. I teach at Discovery High School. I teach economics, uh, world history, geography, and starting next week, I'm teaching a drama class for an, an extra credit class. Okay. Well, first let me ask you, what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year? It is so unbelievable. Uh, we have so many talented and, and really experienced teachers, and especially at my school, we have just unbelievably creative teachers that to be recognized is just such an honor. It's just uh, one of the highlights of my career. Well, tell me, how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching nine years. Okay. Tell me what you enjoy about it. What, what do you get out of it? What's, your, what's the reward for you? Seeing students that didn't believe they had an opportunity or a chance to succeed, seeing them succeed and seeing them walk across the stage when they graduate, it's just amazing. Now tell me about your students. My students are uh, kids that are at least 16 years old. They're credit deficient. A lot of times they come to me with like 60 credits when it takes 220 to graduate. And uh, I usually have them about a year. And because they usually come to me either at the beginning of their senior year or the end of their junior year, somewhere in there. And uh, these kids have obviously not succeeded very well in a comprehensive setting. So my students are the uh, achievement gap that they talk about all the time. Uh, I don't see them as that, but that's what, that's what other people see them as. And that's what they sometimes see themselves as when they come to me. So tell me the reward that you get as a teacher from seeing those kids come in your door uh, and you know, the progress that they make. What does that mean to you? Well, for me, personally, it's just very satisfying to be able, and gratifying, to be able to let a kid actually expand their knowledge base and actually get that joy that they get from, wow, I actually did this. They always told me I couldn't, and now I did. It's like an amazing thing to just watch them bloom and grow. And so, for me, that's, that's just a, a remarkable experience. I wouldn't trade this job. It's, it's what I actually thought I wanted to do when I, when I as a second career, went into education. And uh, I'm just, just thrilled that I have the opportunity to do it. Now, what was your first career? I actually was in business. Um, I've owned several businesses. I've been an entrepreneur. Uh, so I've always worked in business, and I've worked in investments. And so this was something that I just had a, a change in life to well, do Tell me this. why. Tell, tell everybody why you were inspired to become a teacher. Uh, my kids, my two boys and my two girls, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, were growing up and leaving home. Um, and I thought, you know, I had been working in the schools all their, all their time that they had spent in the school. I had worked in the schools uh, as a volunteer. And I worked through Boy Scouts as a volunteer. And I did all those things with kids. Well, then I was watching this, this progression of education. And I guess something clicked. And I decided, uh, you know, this may be where I really need to be. And so, so watching them grow up and, and seeing the things that you saw, you decided teaching was for you? Yes, I decided that, that it was a great thing. And I think that a lot of, uh, a lot of people have a talent and, and a love for kids that they could incorporate into teaching if they would just jump into that second career. But I think that a lot of times people are hesitant to leave where they are and go to a new, a new field, a, a completely different place in life. And I, I think that that would be good if they could. Well, what are some of the challenges that, that you face on a daily basis in your classroom? Uh, I face the idea that kids think that because they haven't succeeded, they're dumb, um, which of course is, is not true. I face the constant uh, barrage of kids that have, have come in as second language learners and don't see themselves maybe as being part of a group um, other than that small segment that they're used to. Um, I see kids that 
that have all kinds of problems that come either uh, emotional sometimes, sometimes uh, legal, sometimes it's other things that have happened, maybe a death in the family or something that throws them off. So there's lots of challenges with this group of kids and it's, it's just every day. So when you're dealing with these students um, who um, are, are different from students from other schools, what do you do to inspire them? How do you reach them? Tell me some of the tricks that you use to, to connect with these kids. Um, actually, <laughs> it's always amazing. I, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things. I don't think that these kids are different than kids in other schools. I think that these are the same kids. They, we, our percentage of kids is exactly mirrored by the other high schools in our district. Uh, what I do think is that these kids maybe have reacted differently to challenges. Um, and I think that as long as you respect them and as long as you say, look, you know, you're just as beautiful, you're just as bright, and you're just as deserving as any other group of kids. So there's no reason you can't also succeed. And if you keep telling them that, eventually they kind of sort of get that. And they get the message that the teachers that they're with all really, really care about them. And I think that's important. They feel like they're part of something. Do you feel that there's kind of an additional reinforcement that you have to give these students? You have to continually make sure that you're not looking at them and saying something that might be misconstrued. Um, you have to be careful how you approach a correction. You have to be careful of how you approach them. If they think they failed, you can't just walk in and say, oh, no, you know, uh, we don't do fail. Um, you have to always reinforce that with the kids. And I think that when you do that and when you get so that you know them, we, we have a small school, a small campus, and I know every kid by name, and I address every kid and as I walk across campus, I say hi to every kid. And I think that that probably, that personal building of a, a relationship with a kid, I think that's where it's at with these kids. Do you think as, as a teacher it should be relationship first? I think that it has to be in so, a relationship sort of thing. I don't think that a teacher walks into a classroom a student may succeed in a class without a relationship with a teacher. I mean, I think we've all had teachers that we didn't really feel tied to. Um, I think that any student can succeed in that sort of thing if they're a self-motivated student. But if you get a student that's not self-motivated, I think they have to have a tie to the teacher or they just can't succeed. Now, did you have a teacher in your background that you had a connection with that you felt special about? I've had a couple. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that... Uh, I had a teacher, my, my French teacher, homeroom teacher, when I was in ninth, tenth grade, uh, encouraged me to do volunteer work. And I think that that was a, a big influence on me. Probably more than the French she taught me was the, <laughs> was the community involvement uh, aspect. And I think probably, and I always say this, and the kids always roll their eyes and they go, oh, God, persons. But I think probably my geometry teacher, because geometry, was, was one of those subjects where once I figured out that it's a way of communicating an idea without speaking a language. It was just like this big breakthrough. And we, you know, that was what he always preached. And so I learned a lot from him just because of the way he approached it and he loved the subject so much. Well, what would you say to someone who's considering teaching as a career, second career like yourself or someone just starting out? What would you, what's your sales pitch to, to convince them that they should consider teaching? I think that uh, the idea that you can impact someone else's life and you can do it in such a way that you can get so much back, just the joy of watching it. I just don't see how you could not do it. So, you, so for you, it was, it was an easy choice once you it decided to make the choice? It was a wonderful choice. choice. <laughs> well, thank you for being with us. Uh, Connie Parsons from the Natomas Unified School District, their Teacher of the Year for 2008. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.